like the concept of the mole, balancing equations is one of those ideas that you learn in first year chemistry class that tends to give a lot of students a hard time, even though it, it is a fairly straightforward concept. I think what makes it difficult is that there's a bit of an art to it. So before we talk about balancing chemical equations, what is a chemical equation? Well, here's some examples right here, and I have some more in the rest of this video. But it essentially just describes a chemical reaction. You got some aluminum, you have some oxygen gas, or or the diatomic oxygen molecule, and then you end up with aluminum oxide. And you would say, OK, fine, that's an equation. It looks nice. I have my reactants, or the things that react. These are the reactants. And then I have the products of this reaction. What are, what's left there to do? Well, you have a problem here. The way I've written it right now, I have one atom of aluminum plus two atoms of oxygen. Right? They're bonded to each other, but there's two atoms of oxygen here, one molecule of diatomic oxygen, or one molecule of oxygen, but they have two oxygen atoms here. And when you add them together, what am I? I have two atoms of aluminum and three atoms of oxygen. So I have a different number of aluminums on both sides of this equation. On this side, I have one aluminum. On this side, I have two aluminums. And then I have a different number of oxygens. On this side, I have two oxygens. And on that side, I have three oxygens. So balancing equations is all about fixing that problem. So I have the same number of aluminum on both sides of the equation, and the same number of oxygens on both sides. So let's try to do that. I'll do it in orange. So I said, just what I said, I have one aluminum here, and I have two aluminums there. So maybe a simple thing is just to put a two out here. So now I have two aluminums on this side, and I have two aluminums on this side. The aluminums look happy. Now let's look at the oxygen. Here I have two oxygens on the left-hand side of the equation. And on the right-hand side of the equation, I have three oxygens. What can I do here? Well, if, if, if I could kind of have half atoms, I could just multiply this by 1 and a half. 1.5. 1 1.5 times 2 is 3. So now I have three oxygens on both sides of this equation, and I have two aluminums on both sides of the equation. Am I done? Well, no, you can't have half an atom or one and a half of an atom. That's, that's not cool. So what you do is you just multiply this so that you end up with whole numbers. So let's just multiply both sides of this whole equation by 2. And we have four aluminums, four aluminums plus three oxygens yields. We multiplied everything by 2. Two molecules of aluminum oxide. Now, you might have been tempted at some point in this exercise to say, oh, well, why don't I just tweak part of the aluminum oxide? Why don't I put a 2 thirds in front of this oxygen? You cannot do that. The, the equation is as it is. The molecule aluminum oxide is aluminum oxide. You can't change the, the relative ratios of the aluminum and the oxygen within the aluminum oxide molecule. You can just change the number of aluminum oxide molecules as a whole that you have, in this case, two. So what did we do? We looked at the aluminum. We said, OK, we need two aluminums to have both sides of that be two. And then when we looked at oxygen, we said, well, if I multiply this by 1 and a half, then that becomes three oxygens here, because 1 and a half times two oxygens, and three oxygens there. And then all we said is, oh, well, I can't have a 1 and a half there, so let me multiply both sides by two. And I ended up with four aluminums plus three oxygen molecules, or six oxygen atoms, yields two molecules of aluminum oxide. Let's see if we can do some more of these. So here I have methane, and that G in parentheses, I just wanted to expose you to that. That just means it's a gas. So I have methane gas plus oxygen gas yields carbon dioxide gas plus water. And that's an L there, so liquid water. So what can we do here? So the general thing is do the complicated molecules first, and then you, at the end you can worry about the single, the single atom molecules, because those are very easy to, to play with. And the reason why you do that, when you, whenever you change a number here, let's say we're trying to engineer how many carbons we have on both sides of this equation. If I set a number here, I'm also changing the number of hydrogens. Then I'll have to play with the hydrogens there. And at the end, I'll have some number of oxygens, and then I have to tweak this number right there. So let's, let's, let's just start with the carbons. It seems complicated, but when you go step by step and you kind of play with things a little bit, it should proceed fairly smoothly. So here I have two carbons two carbons, and here I have, on the right-hand side, I only have one carbon. So ideally, I'd want two carbons on both sides of this equation. So let me put a two out here. So there you go. My carbons are happy. I now have two carbons and two carbons. 
Now let me move to the hydrogens. Remember, I wanted to do the oxygens last, because I can just set this to whatever I want it to be without messing up any of the other atoms. So on this side of the equation, I have four hydrogen atoms. How many hydrogen atoms do I have on this side of the equation? Let's see, so I have four hydrogen atoms here. How many do I have on this side? Well, I have two hydrogen atoms right there. So I want to have four on both sides, so let me put a two in front of the water. So now I have four hydrogen atoms. Cool. Finally, oxygen. On the left-hand side, I have two oxygen atoms. And on the right-hand side, what do I have? I have two times this one oxygen right here. So right now, that's two, right? Two waters. In each water, I have one oxygen atom, but I have two oxygen. I have I have two water molecules. So I have two oxygens. And then I have in the carbon dioxide, I have two oxygen in each carbon dioxide and have two carbon dioxides, right? When I put that magenta 2 out front. So how many oxygens do I have? 2 times 2, I have four oxygens. So on the left-hand side, I have two oxygens. On the right-hand side, I have six oxygens. Two in the two molecules of water and four in the two molecules of carbon dioxide. So how do I make this 2 into 6? I want to have six oxygens on this side. I want to have six oxygens on the left-hand side as well. Well, if I put a 3 out here. If I put a 3 out here, now I have 6 oxygens. And my equation has been balanced. I have 2 carbons on this side, 2 carbons on that side, 4 hydrogens on this side, 4 hydrogens on this side, 6 oxygens on this side, and then 4 plus 2, 6 oxygens on that side. Next equation to balance. This actually becomes quite fun once you, once you get the knack of it. So I have, I have ethane. I have ethane plus oxygen gas yielding carbon dioxide and water. So this is a combustion process. So let's look at the carbons first. I have two carbons here. I have one carbon there. So let me put a two here. So now I have two carbons. Fair enough. And remember, I'm going to worry about the oxygen last. This one's actually not too different than the last problem. I have six hydrogens here. I only have two hydrogens in the water. So we only have three hydrogen molecules, or, or three water molecules. And now I've balanced out the hydrogens. I have six hydrogens on both sides of the equation. And now let's do a deal with the water. Here, on the right-hand side, I have, I'll do it in this orange color, I have two oxygens in each carbon dioxide molecule, and I have two molecules. So I have four oxygens, and I have one oxygen in each water molecule, and I have three molecules, so I have three oxygens here. Is that right? Three oxygens on the right-hand side. Yep, three water molecules. And then I have four oxygens in the carbon dioxide. Right. So I have seven oxygens. I have seven oxygens on this side, and I only have two on this side. So how can I make this two into seven? Well, I can multiply it by three and a half. Right? Remember, I just want to have seven on both sides. If I have three and a half of these diatomic oxygen molecules, three and a half times two is seven. So now I have seven oxygens on both, hand, both sides of the equation. Four plus three, and then seven here. Two carbons, and then six hydrogens. And I'm almost done, except for the fact that you can't have fractions of molecules. So what you do is you just multiply both sides of this equation by two or three or whatever you need to multiply it to get rid of the fraction. So if I multiply everything by two, I end up with two molecules of ethane plus seven molecules of diatomic oxygen, seven O2s, yielding two molecules of carbon dioxide. Oh, sorry, I'm, multi I'm multiplying everything by two. So four molecules of carbon dioxide. Let me. Four molecules of carbon dioxide plus six molecules of water. And if you just to make sure that that all still works, if you want to, you can check. How much carbon do we have? I have four carbons here. I have four carbons here. How much hydrogen do I have? I have two times six. I have 12 hydrogens here. I have 12 hydrogens here. How much oxygen do I have? I have, let me do a different color. I have 14 oxygens here. And here I have eight oxygens. And here I have 6 times 1. I have 6 oxygen. So 6 plus 8 is 14. So my equation has been balanced. 
So that one, a lot of people might have find that to be a hard problem, because you have this 3 and a half, and just going straight to this might seem non-intuitive. But if you just work from the more complicated molecules, and you go atom by atom, and if you end up with any fractions, you just multiply both sides by some number to get rid of the fraction, and then you're done. All right, let's do another one. So this one looks all hairy. I have this, I have this iron, iron oxide plus sulfuric acid yields this all this hairy stuff. But the, the key here to realize is that this group right here, this sulfate group, this sulfate group stays together, right? You have this SO4 there, and you have this SO4 there. So to really simplify things for our head, you can kind of treat that like an atom. So well, let's make a substitution. We'll substitute that for x. And so if we rewrite this as, I'll do it in a vibrant color, iron oxide plus H2. There's only one sulfate group here. So H2, I'll do it in this x. And then that yields. That yields iron, two irons, this molecule with two irons, and it has three of these sulfate groups. Three of these sulfate groups, and then plus water. Plus water. All I did is replace the sulfate with an x. And now we can treat that x like an atom, and we can just balance the equation. So let's see. On the left hand side, how many irons do we have? We have two irons here. We have two irons there. So the irons look balanced at first glance. Let's deal with the oxygens. So if we have three oxygens here, let me do it in a different color. We have three oxygens here, and we only have one oxygen here. And remember, we're, there were some oxygens in this X group, but those the, X, the, the, the sulfate group stayed together, so we can just treat those separately. So if we have we want to have three oxygens on the right hand side as well, so let's stick a three here. Whoops. Let's stick a sometimes my pen tool man malfunctions. So let me put that three there. So now we have three oxygens as well. And then finally, let's see, let's look at the let's look at the hydrogens. Let's look at the hydrogens. So I have or maybe I should we have three, let's see, how many hydrogens do we have here? We have six hydrogens now on the right hand side. Six hydrogens here, three times two. And we want to have six hydrogens here. So we have to have three of these molecules. And then finally, let's look at the sulfate group, that X. We have three X's here. We have three X's here. And lucky for us, we have three X's over there. So our equation has been balanced, and if we want to write it back in terms of the sulfate terms, we can just unsubstitute the x, and we're left with iron, one molecule of iron oxide plus three molecules of sulfuric acid, H2SO4. I just unsubstitute the x with SO4. Yields one of these molecules, SO4, three. Four, three. I just unsubstituted the x plus three molecules of water. Let's do one more, and then I think we'll be all balanced out. Carbon dioxide plus hydrogen gas yields methane plus water. So let's deal with the carbons first. I have one carbon here, one carbon there. The carbons look happy. Let's look at the oxygen. I have two oxygens here. I have one oxygen there. So I want two oxygens here, so let me stick a two there. And then let's deal with the hydrogens last, because this is the easiest one to play with, because it doesn't affect any of the other atoms. So if the hydrogen, I have two here, and I have four plus four here, right? I have four hydrogens there, and I have four hydrogens there. So I need eight hydrogens on the left-hand side. So I just put a four there. And we're all done balancing. Anyway, hopefully you found that useful.